Hi, I'm Stuart Fotts. I'm JCB's product manager in North America, specializing in telescopic handlers. Today, we're gonna to take a close look at one of our lift and place load alls and go over what you need to be doing every day before starting your machine, which is your daily service checks. After that, we'll take a look inside the cab, go over some features, give you a better idea of how to operate our machine. With that, we'll take a closer look at a 50742. When you're performing your daily service checks, you wanna start with the engine. It's very easy to access your daily service checkpoints, including your, your oil dipstick. You wanna ensure that the oil levels fall somewhere between your minimum and maximum indicators on the dipstick. If you find you do require oil, you simply fill it right here, which is your oil fill checkpoint. Next, you wanna check your coolant levels. By looking at the header tank here, you wanna make sure that your coolant level falls between the minimum and maximum line is easily visible to you. Next, you wanna take a look at your filter minder. What you're looking for here is ensuring that it's not in the red zone. If it's in the red zone, you need to clear out any debris in your air filter or replace it altogether. Next, we'll take a look at your transmission oil levels. Just like your oil level, you wanna ensure that the, the transmission oil level falls somewhere between the minimum and maximum indicator on the dipstick. If you find that you need to replace your air filter or check it for debris, you can access that on the right-hand side of the engine simply by removing these two latches to remove your scavenger, clear out any debris you find in there as well as on top of the air filter. It's also very important that you check your tires, specifically your lug nuts and your tire pressure. You wanna make sure that your lug nuts are tightened to 500 foot-pounds of force and that there's enough air in the tire to satisfy its PSI requirements. Located at the rear of the machine is your hydraulic tank. It is important that every day you check the hydraulic sight gauge to ensure that there's enough hydraulic oil in the machine. If you do require any hydraulic oil, the fill point is also located at the back of the machine. It's also important for you to remember that during your daily service check to make sure that you have enough brake system fluid. You can do that here at the front of the machine simply by removing this panel and making sure that your brake system fluid is up to the indicator line on this container. If you find that you also require brake system fluid, this is also your fill point. So now that we've completed our daily checks, it's time to start the machine. First thing you should do when you get in the cab, of course, is put your seatbelt on. Then disengage your parking brake simply by lowering this lever. Now it's time to start your machine, and the ignition switch is located to the right of the steering wheel. When it's time to go, you will use our power shift transmission lever, which is on the left-hand side of your steering wheel. You raise it up to going forward, middle is neutral, and then all the way down is reverse. It is a four-speed power shift transmission, so you can change between modes as you need to. It's also important to remember that your horn is also conveniently located on the transmission lever. If your machine comes equipped with a beacon, that can be turned on and off using the switch located on the left-hand cluster. Next to that is the switch that turns on and off your work lights. Moving on, we're now gonna talk about operation controls. So your primary joystick is gonna control your boom. Pulling it back raises your boom up, pushing it forward lowers your boom, shifting the joystick to the right extends your boom, and to the left retracts. To the right of your joystick is what we call our tilt lever, which controls the forks or any other attachment you have on the front end of the boom. Pulling the tilt lever back will tilt your forts up. Pushing it forward will tilt your forts down. Behind that, we have our auxiliary controls. So if your machine has a side tilting or side shifting carriage, you can shift or tilt the carriage to the left simply by moving the lever to the left. You can also tilt or shift your carriage to the right by moving the lever to the right. Behind that is your sway control. On the 50742 and all larger lift and place load offs, sway control is standard. Shifting the lever to the left allows your machine to sway to the left. Shifting it to the right allows you to sway to the right. When utilizing the sway function, refer to the inclinometer located above the operator's head on top of the windshield to ensure that the machine gets back to level before moving on to the next application. And finally behind that, we have our mechanical steer mode selector. You can select between four-wheel steer, two-wheel steer, or crab steer. 
it is important to remember that when shifting between steer modes that your bat tires are straight before shifting from one mode to another. On the right hand cluster, you have an information key which allows you to toggle and change the display, the information display on your machine between machine hours, hours to net service interval, and machine speed. Below that and to the right of the ignition are your controls for your roof wiper, your rear window wiper, and your boom lockout, which locks out all boom functions for safety purposes. Beneath that are your controls for AC and heat, as well as fan speed. It's important to remember when operating the boom that you fully retract it before raising it as a matter of safety. So when you are operating at height, you want to raise your boom before extending it. Likewise, when it's time to lower your boom, you want to make sure that you retract it before lowering it also is a matter of safety. So there you have it. A basic overview of your daily service checks, as well as basic operation of a JCB lift in place load all. I'm Stuart Fox. If you do have any further questions, please refer to your operators and service manuals.